So um, remember how I said I wasn't going to show you Deadline Day because nothing exciting was going to happen? Well, I still haven't shown you Deadline Day. We we have got to the stage we were meant to have got to, but um, something exciting did happen. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome to Living Sports here for another episode of Glory Hunter on Football Manager 22. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button for more daily Football Manager content. And if you missed the last episode, go and check it out. We played against Real Madrid, we played against Barcelona. It was a pretty exciting episode. Go and see it. And the one before that, we talked about the transfers. Today, I'm going to have to talk to you about a few more transfers as well. Yeah, you can see from the screen in front of you, we are on Mattia Viti. He's now at Bayern Munich. We sold him for £21.5 million. He played 14 times for us last year and now we've made £14 million on him when selling him to Bayern Munich. It felt like a pretty good deal. We also were offered £5 million for Manu Morlanes, who was just kind of sitting in our reserve. So we sold him to Torino for £5 million on transfer deadline day. A very exciting day so far. And our backup, right back option, Ezekiel Dimek, decided he wanted to leave. And I was a bit disappointed about that. Deadline day offers came in. He got very, very unhappy that we didn't sell him when we initially rejected some offers. And I thought, he's not going to be my first choice right back anymore. Probably he's my third, fourth, maybe fifth choice centre back. We could probably sell him. And we did sell him to push him and glad back for nearly £30 million. Made a bit of profit on him, as you can see. So we ended up making... About £60 million on transfer deadline day. And I thought, that's burning a hole in my pocket. What will I do? And I did think, we've sold VT, we've sold Dimek. That's two centre-back options. Could maybe do some cover at right-back as well. Because if uh, Yuranshev... Is that his full name? I can't remember. Yes, Yuranshev. If uh, Yuranshev was uh, was injured, we would be down to kind of backup options at right-back if Dimek wasn't there. People who don't normally play at right-back. So I thought, right, let's look for a centre-back. And a right back. If there's someone who can play both of those positions even better. And we found one who was on the transfer list from a rival in our division. And with just two hours left to go in the window, we made an offer for him. And that man was Jules Kunde, the centre back from Sevilla. We've signed him. And it kind of threw my plans up in the air a bit because Comper, who was meant to be my centre-back partner beside Pau Torres, well, um, just couldn't do a lot better than Comper. Yeah, you can see he's awfully good. Good at heading, good at marking, good at tackling, good at positioning. He's only 5'11", slightly short for a centre-half, which is a little bit worrying, but all in all, his stats are pretty good. Kunde can play at centre-back, can also play at right-back if we need him to play there as well. I thought the perfect man. You're thinking, how much did you pay for him? The answer is a lot of money. Not all of it up front, but a lot of money. £80 million pounds it's going to cost. About 35 of that or so is up front. The rest is over instalments. And as you can see, there are potential add-ons based on international appearances and playing a certain number of games for us and us winning La Liga, I think. They could take up to £105 million. Pounds. Which is ridiculous. But as you can see from his average rating, he's played four league games for us. He has got a goal and his average rating is 7.85. So I think probably it was worth the money. And now has put us in a strange situation though that I still want to play Kenny Comper in the team. But I feel as if Kunde should play at centre-back alongside Torres. Which means, do we move Comper into the defensive midfield position and have Foyt go out to right back? Do we keep Foyt in here and have to play Kunde at right back and Comper at centre back? Do we just not play Comper at all? And we have obviously Yarintsev coming in to play at right back and we have no Comper in the team. It's a good problem to have. The fact that we can have some rotation in those positions and we have different options that I'm very happy using. And bear in mind as well, we also have Thieleman who can come in and play at centre back and right back and defensive midfield as well. We do have a lot of options in these areas now. One of which is Jules Kunde, 
who is absolutely outstanding as a centre-back, immediately comes in as our star player. And just by signing Kunde, it's moved our uh, odds up to 15 to 2. It was 9 to 1, and then it stretched to 13 to 1, but it's now down to 15 to 2 just by signing Kunde, which is uh, no mean feat at all. You can see in the, the star players over there, the key players on the right hand side Camavinga, Vinicius Junifero Madrid, Frankie de Jong, and Araujo from Barcelona. And then you've got Kunde for us, and uh, Menini is just sneaking in there as well our Argentine midfielder, who you might have noticed if you look at the tactics, has been playing out on the wing recently. Pellegrini was playing pretty well in midfield, as was Berg, and I thought, well, I can't not play Menini. So uh, Menini ended up on the right-hand side when Demir had been struggling for a couple of games, and he's uh, scored quite a few goals from that position, I must say. But yes, a £100 million man at centre-back now, Jules Kunde. 28 years of age, he's still got, you know, two or three years. He can easily play at centre-back for us. He can cover it right back if need be as well. Sorry you weren't here for when it happened live, but it was a pretty decent transfer. And he could be the type of player that just pushes us over the line in this La Liga season. Talking about La Liga, you can see on the left-hand side there, we are currently in fourth position. We have had that one defeat to Barcelona that you saw for the couple of draws and four wins. I'll talk you through the results in just a moment. Our goal difference is just about catching back up to uh, Barcelona after they were 13-0 up after two games. Crazy, crazy. You can see in the Champions League, we do have a game against Hertha Berlin today. Uh, we are at the bottom of our table because we lost to Chelsea. We'll show you that game as well. Let's, let's go into the schedule. So we last met against Barcelona. Since then, we did beat Betis 4-0. A hat-trick from Quinton and uh, a goal from Menini in there as well. We then unfortunately lost to Chelsea 2-0. We went down 1-0 thanks to Romelu Lukaku scoring a goal. Then Manu Sanchez got himself sent off. We were playing with 10 men. Then we got ourselves an injury to Kenny Comper as well. So we're down to 9 men. And Christian Pulisic tucked one past us. Chagwezi did not start in that game against us, but he did assist Christian Pulisic, which was a little bit annoying. We then had a very frustrating game against Levante, where we should have won. We dominated the game. They went down to 10 men, and we still didn't. It was a 0-0 draw. Very disappointing indeed, but we backed that up with a 4-0 victory. Four goals for Menini in that one. A pretty good performance from him. And then we beat Alaves 4-0. Maroni, Kunde, Yarintsev, and Demir with the goals in that one. We were against 10 men for a quarter of the game, but you can see 4-0, 4-0 and 4-0. We're scoring lots of goals and actually, if you look at our defensive record, the games have all been clean sheets except the ones against Chelsea, Barcelona and Real Madrid. So that's no, no, no bad going. That's what I would say. <laughs> I think it's uh, pretty good. I think it's showing that certainly having Kunde in the side is probably helping out defensively. So today we play against Hertha Berlin and Cadiz just before this first international break. Could be very exciting indeed. A win against Hertha is important if we want to try and get out of our Champions League group. And then it's vital that we get a win against Cadiz to keep the pressure on Barcelona and Real Madrid up there. You can see Sevilla, who we bought Kunde from, as ahead of us in the league at the moment. They haven't actually replaced Kunde with anybody. They've not brought anyone in this season. They've sold a couple of their best players. I'm amazed they're that high up on the table, to be honest. Maybe it's who they've played against. Who have they beaten? Bilbao, Ibar, Cadiz, Levante. Have they had any? They've, they've not had hard games against Barcelona and Real Madrid yet. So when they do that, I imagine they'll go tumbling down the table. But yeah, it's important when we play that game against Cadiz that we do win. Because as I say, Barcelona could run away with the, the league at this rate. Real Madrid close on their heels. So we want to make sure we are close on their heels as well. And also, as I say, important game against Hertha. Let's get into it. Let's show you the team. So here we are, here is the team we're going to use up against Hertha today. Karnasechi in goal, Kunde and Torres at centre-back. Yarintsev on the right, Zinchenko on the left. Zinchenko not really full condition, nor is Yarintsev, but uh, Sanchez can't play because he got sent off in the last Champions League game, so Zinchenko is our only option at that left side of the defence at the moment. Foyt, Berg and Pellegrini back to the old three from last season in midfield. Demir, Esposito and Moroni up front. Let's see how we get on. See, I'm not quite sure who my best striker is at the moment. We had Kansu, we've had Quinton, Maroni there today. We had Kwame as well at one point. I'm still not sure. Esposito obviously was up front for one of the games. I still don't know who our best striker is at this moment in time. As soon as someone has two or three games back to back with good form, they will be the keeper that, uh, or the, the keeper of that position, I should say. Maroni scored a goal in the last one. 
Quentin had a hat-trick killer run in the season, then he played a couple of poor games after that, so we're down 1-0 early on here, thanks to Chris Mepham, who's playing for Hertha Berlin. Just what you expect in the Champions League, isn't it? Concede to a Welshman playing in Germany. Just a long ball to the back post, and nobody tracks his man. Who's that that's meant to be tracking him? It's this guy right here. Not Pal Torres, this one here. I can't click on him. I know who it was. Somebody was not tracking his man, and we are down 1-0 early on here but yeah it's hard it's hard at the moment to pick what my best striking option is which is not ideal when you're trying to win games and score goals but it's good that we're getting goals from elsewhere here's another chance Pellegrini with the corner into the front post and Paul Torres heads off the post and off the other post I was hoping it was just going to trickle into the goal but unfortunately it didn't you can see that it just came off the other post and we are still down one now another chance for Hertha though it's headed just over the bar just clip the top of the bar I think there I'm going in this game, it's been fairly even, but Hertha have their goal. Foyt with it, back to Zinchenko. Foyt now, Zinchenko, can he get the ball into the box? Will he switch to play? Yes, he does. It's poorly passed though, but eventually Kunde, who's on the yellow card, will collect it and come forward. Yurintsev into Maroni, and it's cleared away. Kunde wins a header though, not bad for someone who's 5'11". Esposito on it now on the left-hand side, cuts back, plays into the middle. Pellegrini now, Esposito, Zinchenko, this has got to result in a chance for us, surely, as Foyt finds Yarincev. And we recycle the play down the right. Demir to the byline, puts it in and it's cleared away. And Kunde finds Yarincev, it's another chance for us. We're really piling on the pressure here. Demir, ball into the box, Esposito is off the crossbar. Oh, what a chance. We've built up some pressure there, we just could not make it pay off. And we'll go into half time 1 0 down here. Indeed, we will. And that's not really good enough. Go and uh, do better. The goalkeeper seems a bit unhappy about that. I'm not sure why. We're going to change an attacking mentality in this second half. See if we can get ourselves some goals as Torres wins a header. And Moroni runs with the ball. Finds Demir now. They're playing five at the back, remember, so it's going to be hard to break down. Demir, ball into the middle. Esposito heads it wide. He's had a few chances as Esposito. And none of them have scored yet. None of them have scored. That's not how it works, is it? Zinchenko with the throw in. Finds Foyt. And Pellegrini now over to Berg. And when we go down the right hand side, Demir cuts in field. Finds Esposito. Got to finish. He does this time. This time he does a score or whatever it was I said earlier. He's made that chance pay. An assist from Demir who struggled so far this season after his big money move to us. But a good assist for him today. Finds Esposito with a dangerous running behind. The man just runs away. So it does the f the, the wing back there, Bayer. And we are back on level terms now. One all. Going attacking appears to have worked. So let's see if we can get ourselves a second goal. We need to make some changes here with 20 minutes to go. Pellegrini struggling for fitness. We'll bring on Menini in the midfield. Zinchenko is struggling, but we don't have anyone to bring on for him. So we'll just bring on Thielman on the other side instead for Yurintsev. And confirm those subs. 20 minutes to go. We'll see if anything can happen here as we demand some more from the team. And with 10 minutes to go, if nothing has happened, we'll bring on another one up front as Maroni has struggled today. But Bayer has the ball and he'll play it in field. And it's over to Farias. Obviously, Farias, who we sold to Hertha Berlin in the summer, and they gave us uh, Kumi in part exchange as well as uh, about £14 million. But Menini has the ball now, Maroni. Thielman with it, coming on to play it right back today. Normally he plays in midfield or at the back, but Moroni's in behind and he tucks it in. He must have heard that I was thinking of taking him off because instead he's gone and scored a goal and we'll leave him on. Why not? As he's in a bit of form there. Thielman with the ball. It's a lovely ball behind the defence here and Moroni runs in behind. It's a good finish from the man we signed from Augsburg. It's a beautiful, beautiful finish. And what we'll do is we'll take off Esposito and we'll bring on the former Hertha man, Kwame, there to play on the left-hand side. He wears a number three so he can play, play on the left wing. Of course, why not? It's still annoying me that I can't change his number because of the way the numbering system works in Spain. But nonetheless, we're leading 2-1 here with just added time to go. And hopefully still being an attacking doesn't come back to bite me here as Demir gets the ball. Can he play it into the middle? He plays it back to Berg, he'll hit it. It's cleared away as Zinchenko has it now and he goes down the line. And will he cross it in? He does indeed. Kwame hits it. Oh, Kwame nearly gets himself a goal against his former club there. There's two minutes to go. And Hertha launched the ball long. And we've got it all the way back with Karnasechi, who goes down the left-hand side. But Bayer wins the header. But we've got it back now. And Kwame with it. 
finds Moronier and Berg's trying to get behind the defence here, but Moronier wins the ball back and can he finish? No, he can't. It's just wide of the goal and there's a minute still to go and I should really have come off attacking by now, but I haven't. And Thielman wins the header and he plays it to Demir. There's what, 20, 30 seconds to go in this game. Are Hertha going to get an equaliser or are we going to hold on for the winner? For the winner? For the win in the game. Let's find out. The ball switch play. Thielman, can he track it back? He eventually gets the ball after Foyt wins it. And there's just 15 seconds on the clock now. Menini, Berg, forward to Thielman. Was he in behind the man there? He was. He was offside. So surely that's going to tick down the time and it's going to be blown for full time when this ball's launched forward. Kundi has it. Plays it back to the keeper and we're over the four minutes, ref. Come on, blow this whistle. And indeed he has and we've won the game 2-1 and that's pretty impressive. Nice work to everybody involved there, I'll say. And we have won the game. 2-1. On to the next one against Cadiz. We're now up into third place. Probably going to fight with ourselves and Leon for second. That feels about right. But let's move on to this game in La Liga against Cadiz where we need to get ourselves a win to keep uh, keeping the title race with Barcelona and Real Madrid. Well, we definitely are going to have to play catch up with Barcelona here. They just beat ba Malaga 5-0. If we lose our game today, we'll be 10 points behind after eight games. That's not good enough. So we need to make sure to win this win against Cadiz to keep at least some amount of pressure on Barcelona. Let's show you the team for this one. Here we go. I'm not going to change too much because a lot of players played quite well in the last one, but Karnasetti is going to be in goal. Kunde and Torres at the back. We're going to move Foyt back to right back because Kompar is going to come back in to play defensive midfield and Zinchenko keeps his place at left back. Vitinha is going to play instead of Berg in midfield alongside Pellegrini. Demir, Esposito and Maronier, the front three from the last time, stay as the front three for this time. Let's get into it. Let's win the game. Let's keep some pressure on those top two. Obviously, Cadiz sometimes play in yellow as well, but we are the yellow team today. Cadiz are in that kind of greenish colour, it would look like, according to the top left-hand side there. So we'll see how we get on. The game has started. We've not had much of the ball, and there's not been any highlights. There we go. It's a lovely kind of checkered pattern that the Cadiz are wearing today as they play the ball in behind, but Compar will collect. Doing not bad being the deepest man there, since he's meant to be a defensive midfielder, not a centre-back. As Comper has the ball here, the young 20-year-old Frenchman. £40 million, pounds, remember, we paid for him. Let's hope he is going to be a worthwhile uh, investment. As Demir, who we paid £48 million pounds for, goes down the right-hand side. He cuts back, finds Foyt. It's a poor ball in, but Kunde will collect. The £100 million pound man finds Demir now on the right-hand side. Ball into the box. Esposito off the crossbar and Fosu Mensa clears the ball behind for a corner ball. We are dominating this game in terms of chances created, but not on the score sheet yet as Kunde heads it over. Matt's going to change their attacking mentality already early on here. Looking at the game, we're dominating it. It's the sort of game you have to go attacking, go and get chances, put men forward. Risk, you know, being beaten on the break, but we're a better team than Cadiz, so we should happily be able to push forward and go and get this ball back. As you can see, we're pressing high up the pitch. Ball launched and Foyt wins the header. And now... Hopefully, with our better players, we can go and do something here. As Kunde drives forward, finds Esposito. Maroni, a good save for the keeper. It's out for a corner kick. That's an example of what we want. We want to get the ball and just drive at them, run at someone. It's hard to defend if someone's running at pace at you. That's exactly what happened there. And it was Kunde, our centre-back, who was doing the running at pace, not even one of our attacking players. Well, this is a game we've totally dominated so far, but no goals to show for it at this moment in time. See, I'm not happy with performance. The performance is all right, just no goals. So that's mainly what I'm not happy with. And the second half will begin. The first highlight here starts with a Cadiz goalkeeper having the ball in his own box. Is he going to launch it long or will he play it short? He launches it long. Who's going to win the header? It's Torres and he finds Zinchenko. And now can we go forward with it? Esposito, Maronier tries to get past the defence, but he is challenged. And Darbo, who... I'm sure Darbo was with us when we were at Roma, but Pellegrini, who was also with us at Roma, has won the ball back. He goes on the left-hand side. Can he get the ball in? He plays it back to Zinchenko. And Comper, who hits it, and it's deflected off. So many people there. And Esposito ended up having a shot, and it went over the bar. But Pellegrini will take the corner kick. It's swung into the front post, and it's cleared away as Foyt will collect and play it back to Pellegrini. The ball bounces off the defender. I don't imagine the chance is going to continue, is it? Zinchenko down the left-hand side now. Can he get the ball into the box? Nice cross. He can indeed, and it's headed away. Comper has it. Back to Zinchenko. The highlight continues. Esposito back to Comper. Pellegrini. Vitinha with it now, and it's just wide of the goal. And we've created so many chances. But it's still 
nil nil and that's not good at all as CCA picks up the first yellow card of the game and Esposito takes a free kick from about 30 yards out and it's a great save for the goalkeeper and Kundi ends up tucking the ball behind for a corner no it's not it's a a, a goal kick I should say Esposito with another free kick it's another good save from the goalkeeper and it's out for a corner this time round XG of nearly two but we haven't scored yet Pellegrini ball in and it's headed away as Maroni will collect this one and back to Pellegrini can he get the ball in the box he does but he was offside oh how on earth are we not ahead in this game we have absolutely dominated it and we're going to have to demand some more from the team again with 20 minutes to go Pellegrini corner ball into the front post it's headed away by Fosu Mensa and somehow Cadiz going to break away and have a chance here Kiko gets round his man comes forward now Valoya is with it over to Alex and Icardi it's not Mauro Icardi is it Icardi with the ball he has it's a good save from Carnesecchi I just have to check is that Mauro Icardi that's playing for them it is indeed playing for Cadiz a 34 year old Mauro Icardi formerly of PSG and Inter Milan Wow. Well, we're making some changes because there's some tired legs out there. Demir will come off. We'll bring on Menini for him. Looking further forward, Maroni has not played well, so we'll bring on Quinton for him. And looking further back, off comes Pellegrini. He's had a good game, but he's struggling for some fitness. So we'll uh, we'll move some players about here. Move Vettina over to that playmaker role, and Berg can come on to play as at Metzala. 20 minutes to go, 15 minutes to go, and somehow... We are not winning this game, even though we've absolutely dominated it. And having a look at some of the instructions, we're going to go a little bit more direct. Never mind passing this place and out of defence. We're going to go attack fairly wide, counter-press, counter, and distribute quickly. We don't necessarily need to take short kicks anymore. We've got 10 minutes left. We need to somehow go and get ourselves a win here. We need to get ourselves a goal as the time ticks down. It's a game we've dominated. We have to be winning these sorts of games. And we've got a corner. Zinchenko in and Kunde heads it in his second goal of the season. And he could have just clinched a vitally important three points for us here. As it's a set piece goal into the front post. Kunde is only five foot eleven, rises up above the defenders around him, and has got a vitally important goal here for us. It could prove to be so so important in the context of this season we just about after a game of total domination we just get over the line with that win that pushes us up into third place at the moment before teams around us have played their other game and we're just about just about holding on to Barcelona at the moment who are seven points ahead after eight games here remember did still to play their game this week well, that was two very, very exciting games. A late turnaround in the game against Hertha and a late winner in that game against Cadiz means that we are now third in our Champions League group and third in La Liga. That's a bit of symmetry there. That's very pleasant indeed, isn't it? Yes, I think it is. So we're going to come back for the games against Sevilla because that could be a very important one. Currently, they're in fourth place in La Liga. Could be a battle of the top sides there and the game against Leon in the Champions League group stage. That... Could be a battle as well to see who gets into the Champions League. So for both are very tight games, and on paper at least, and that should be very interesting to see how we get on in those ones. So if you have enjoyed this episode, a 2-1 win over Hertha and a 1-0 victory over Cadiz last minute winner in that one there, then please leave a like on the video. It really does help us out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until the next one, which is going to be those games against Sevilla and Leon. We'll see you then.